Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Like Arnold Jackson secretly aligning himself with Kimberly Drummond in an attempt to marginalize Willis Jackson in a power play to gain Philip Drummond's vast fortune and control of the company in some bleak, alternate, different strokes universe, this is the Discriminating Gamer. Say, kids, do you like that Victory Point Games? Well, today we're going to take a look at my top five Victory Point Games of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, Victory Point Games is another fantastic uh, board game uh, production company. So I'm going to continue my series of my top five games from some of my favorite companies by today taking a look at Victory Point Games. So first of all, let me give some honorable mentions. First of all, Cruel Necessity. Cruel Necessity is a fantastic game from Victory Point Games. It's a States of Siege game um, where various uh, forces are moving toward a central point and you've got to kind of just hold them back as best you can. In this case, it takes place during the eight, uh, English Civil War of the 17th century century as uh, the forces of, uh, of, of King Charles uh, kind of begin to descend upon uh, King uh, or, uh, Oliver Cromwell and uh, the forces in Parliament. Uh, it's a very fun, uh, interesting game. Um, I also enjoyed Paul Koenig's uh, Six Panzer Army, the Bold Six Panzer Army, which of course was a war game based around the um, uh, Battle of the Bulge. Very, very good uh, kind of Hex Encounters board game there. Another uh, uh, States of Siege game, Zulus on the Rampart. This was a game about uh, uh, the uh, uh, Battle of Rourke's Drift in uh, the 1870s, I believe, uh, in South Africa, when, of course, just a handful of British soldiers held off these thousands of strong Zulu army. Very good States of Siege game there as well. Imperial Stars 2, this was a fun science fiction uh, board game, of course, different starships uh, going around the board, attacking uh, each other, very kind of a, a war game there, very fun. And finally, uh, Dawn of the Zeds, uh, the third edition of Dawn of the Zeds, I like the second edition, third, third edition improved upon that, very good production there. But uh, Dawn of the Zeds 3, uh, it's another States of Siege game where you're trying to essentially protect a, the city center from incoming hordes there. The, the original versions were solo games. The third edition actually made it so you could play it cooperatively. And there are some other advantages that came along. Different ways to play the game with that third edition as well. Coming in at number 5 is Loithen, Frederick's Greatest Victory. Um, Loithen, Frederick's Greatest Victory is a, is a war game. It's got, uh, of course, a little puzzle map board there. It's a you know small box game, but it um, recreates the I, a very famous battle from the Seven Years' War under the Frederick the Great. Uh, Frederick the Great, uh, the way you kind of organize and you create kind of your real armies and your fake armies to kind of fool the enemy there. And then, of course, you, you attack. You've got infantry, cavalry, all that goodness. But it's just a very good, clean, sharp, kind of a smaller war game, but a very, very fun war game. You have event cards that come out. It's very good. Um, I highly recommend, if you get a chance, check out Loithen, um, Frederick's Greatest Victory. Justin and I played this game years ago, and it, it really left a mark on me. It's, it's just a, a lot of fun, good competition, good, um, uh, good strategies that you're employing in this game. Really enjoyed that one as well. My number four is Wings for the Baron. Wings for the Baron is a very unusual game. It's a World War I game, but it's not a war game. Rather, it is a, a very much kind of a euro -y game where you are the aircraft manufacturers for the German government in World War I. And you are essentially trying to improve your designs. You're applying kind of technological innovations. But at the same time, you are trying to make money. And you're trying to sell your planes to the German gov government. And you're getting, of course, script and paper money, but you got to transfer that into gold to make sure you can survive, you know, if anything goes wrong. Um, but there's just a lot of fun things. You can play dirty tricks on other people, and, it, 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 again, a very fun card. Events from the war playing out, so you, you, you I mean, his, as they did historically, so you never, but you never quite know when that's coming up, and, and so you're trying to kind of maximize what you're doing with your, with your company, even as you're facing potential defeat. Uh, in the war. Very, very good game. A very unusual game and a great theme. I love the theme here. That is Wings for the Baron, my number four from Victory Point Games. My number three game is Villainous Vikings. Villainous Vikings was a lot of fun. It's a game where it's a dice chucker, and I really like that, but you're essentially assembling a, a, a Viking crew. You're going on these quests and missions around Europe, and um, you're going to these different places that give you different, different, there's different things to do. Um, but you have to constantly fight. You're leading toward, I believe it was called Valhalla, like the ending fight, um, where you've got to launch this big, massive thing. But you're, you're, I like it because you're just constantly chucking dice. But at the same time, you have choices. You have important choices about where to go, uh, you know, what, what, what you want to 
you know, have on your crew and whatnot. Very fun, very solid game. Uh, really enjoyed Villainous Vikings. That is my number three from Victory Point Games. Number two is a, again, it's a World War I game, but not necessarily a, a straight war game. It is another States of Siege game. This is Habsburg Eclipse. Habsburg Eclipse, another small box Victory Point game. It is States of Siege, so you are essentially in Vienna. And you have got, you know, the Russians approaching you, the Allies from Italy are approaching you, um, you got the Serbian front encroaching, and you're trying to hold all these guys back, all, trying to hold all these armies back, but at the same time you have internal dissent, I think like the Hungarians and the Croats or whatever, so you're trying to keep them down, but you have so many resources you can spend each time. Again, you have various effects, various events from the, from the war playing out, even as you're trying to hold these things back. It's done very, very well, and um, you've got certain tokens that, again, represent kind of historic figures and historic people. Um, extremely fun. I'm a huge I'm a student of, of World War I. Um, uh, that, that's something I'm actually learning about right now. I'm, I'm taking some classes on that right now. And it's just it, it's endlessly fascinating to me. And this game does the history so well, but it's also a very fun, intense game. It is a solo game, um, so if you're a solo gamer out there, definitely, definitely look into... Uh, Habsburg Eclipse. Now, there's also um, uh, Austrian or uh, Ottoman Sunset, which I have not played. I've heard that one's good. Maybe at some point I'll take a look at that one. I hear you can actually combine them, make one Uber game. Um, but uh, really enjoyed Habsburg Eclipse, the best of the States of Siege games that I've played, in my opinion. And that is my number two. My number one game from Victory Point Games is a game that um, I played many times. Played it with Justin. Played it with Sean. A um, few other people. It's a game that I just really immediately took to and really enjoyed quite a bit. And this is a game that um, never gets old. I can keep playing it again and again because it's based on chess. This is For the Crown. Um, For the Crown is essentially a deck builder, but it's also a game of chess. Essentially, you are playing, you're getting cards, and you can buy more cards, or you can take actions with the cards, or you can get rid of the cards in exchange for getting the units. And the units, of course, don't act like traditional chess pieces. Now, you just start, I think, with your sovereigns, right, your kings on the board, but you get all these different units that can do different things, move in different ways. So as you're playing the game, you know, initially you're investing, right? You're, you're trying to buy more cards and more units, and then there, there's kind of a shift about halfway through the game where now you're, you're actually fighting the war. But what's interesting about the, the, the game is not only are you having to deal with that, but you are have to remember what all your opponent's units do because it, it's very easy if you're not paying attention to let someone get check on you get checkmate on you because on one of your sovereigns because you just are constantly trying to remember what everything does and so it's it, it's really quite mentally taxing but it is brilliant there's been several expansions that have come out that have added more and unique and fun and interesting units and cards to the game i really like for the crown a lot this is one i brought with me from 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 utah here to texas and i and i love it i haven't played it since i've been down here but i want to play it again because i'm, I'm it's fantastic so that is uh, For the Crown, second edition, I believe, uh, from Victory Point Games. That is my number one Victory Point Games of all time. Thank you once again for uh, joining us today on the Discriminating Gaming, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please let me know, uh, do you like these games? Do you not like these games? Um, have you played them? Um, are you interested in playing them? Uh, please go ahead and let me know. Also let me know what other companies out there you'd like me to take a crack at, because uh, you know, I've got a lot of companies I've played games from, and uh, I'd like to do more in this series. So uh, let me know what you're thinking there, and uh, please leave a comment, like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, and i got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if there's one question I've always wanted to ask, it's... What you talking about, Alan Emmerich? Please somebody help me on my feet again And I don't know where I'm going And I don't know where I've been Please somebody help me on the solid ground It's a long time and I'll be dying Once a year I wind up in the band I say we play this game for the crown! <laughs>